Good morning, dear students. Today we are speaking about dental cements. By the end of this chapter, you should recognize what's meant by dental cement, classify them, and identify their uses, requirements, and their different types. Also, we have to identify the uh, component of the zinc phosphate cement, its setting reaction, mixing procedure, and recognize its properties. Except for a resin cement, dental cement are generally materials formed by mixing powdered oxide with an acidic liquid. They set by acid-base reaction, and that's why they are called acid-base cement. We have general requirements of the dental cements. First of all, they are hard and brittle material. They have low strength. They have low, although they have low strength, we use them in dentistry uh, because they do a certain function. Also, they have low strength compared to the restorative material, such as composite resin. Uh, they are soluble in the oral fluid. As we see, these properties, hard and brittle, so they are easy to break. They have low strength and they are soluble in the oral fluids. And we still use them in dentistry frequently because they do a certain function as we will see later. Dental cements are used as a rooting agent or bonding agent, a bases and liners, and restorative material. A rooting agent means cementing agent or retain the indirect restoration to the tooth structure. If we have a crown or bridge or veneer restoration, we have to cement them or to bond them to the tooth structure, we use uh, to do this function using a dental cement. So the dental cement used as a luting agent, their function is to retain or hold together the indirect restoration to the prepared tooth structure. And we mix them in a looting consistency. So the consistency of the looting cement is a thin layer of about 25 micron. They are used as a permanent or temporary cementation. The permanent cementation means long-term cementation for the indirect restoration. Long-term cementation means for a long period uh, of time. Temporary cementation used for, uh, when we have to remove the restoration after two or three weeks. And this happens if we prepare a tooth for crown, bridge, or veneer. We have to do a temporary restoration, a temporary crown or a temporary bridge to preserve the tooth from movement and to keep it in its place. So we have to cement this temporary restoration with a temporary cement for easy removal later on. Also, uh, we do this till the permanent restoration is finished by the lab. And if the restoration finished by the lab, it's a permanent restoration but we cement it temporary for two or three weeks. Why to try, uh, try it in inside the patient's mouth to see how comfort it is by him. Uh, if, we, uh, if the patient complain, we can adjust the restoration. Uh, and if it is completely satisfied by the patient, we remove it and uh, cement it permanently by a permanent cement. The second use for uh, dental cement is bases and liner. The main function of bases and liner is pulp protection and dentine sealing. If a patient coming complaining with a caries, we have to remove the caries. And when we remove the caries, we remove the enamel 
and the dentin is exposed. Dentin is, is, is very sensitive to heat and cold and even to uh, the air. So we have to put a layer bit over the dentin to cover it to prevent any uh, stimuli to the pulp. Here is a question. Why we don't feel this pain in a sound if we have a sound tooth because dentin is the best insulator and if we remove a layer of the dentin it will become sensitive the removal of the dentin depends on the extension of caries so when we do a cavity preparation we have to remove all the carious dentin uh, when uh, we remove the carious dentin we have to look about the remaining dentine between the base of the cavity and the dental pulp because the dentine is is it tubules so the tubules has an orifice which uh, which allow passes of chemicals from the filling material to the dental pulp that's why we put a layer of the cement to prevent chemicals from reaching the pulp and the plugging or sealing the orifices of the dentinal tubule. Uh, here, if we remove in the, in the right photo, if, uh, if we remove a large layer of the dentine, the remaining dentine between the base of the cavity and the dental pulp is uh, small is uh, less than half millimeter and this easily passes the uh, chemicals from the filling material to the tooth uh, to the dental pulp and that's why we put a liner a very thin layer of liner before we put the dental uh, base what are the difference between bases and liners? A cement base is a thick layer of cement of about 1 to 2 millimeters applied under the uh, restoration. And its main function is to prevent thermal, mechanical and electrical stimuli to the dental pulp. A thermal stimuli coming from the uh, filling material if it is a metallic filling material it easily uh, transmit the uh, heat and cold stimuli to the dental pulp causing pain the mechanical stimuli comes from the forces of mastication uh, the electrical stimuli coming from uh, two different uh, metallic filling material uh, put in the same side or neighboring each other this will create a electric circuit in the presence of the saliva causing an electrical stimuli to the pulp so the cement base uh, prevent uh, all these stimuli and the uh, cement base must be strong enough to support the restoration so not to be fractured under the forces of uh, mastication and this is the mix of the dental cement which must be a thick in consistency while the cement liner is a very thin uh, layer of the cement thin layer of the cement put between the tooth, uh, the base of the cavity and the uh, dental pulp. The main function of the cement liner is sealing the orifices of the dentinal tubule and protecting the pulp from chemical stimuli. The chemical stimuli may be uh, comes from the uh, overlying filling material. So here the strength is not necessarily because it is covered by a cement base. The third use of the dental cement is direct restorative material uh, in cavities with low stress bearing areas such as class 5 and class 3 cavities. 
Class 5 and Class 3 cavities not subjected to high stresses of mastication and uh, we have to uh, fill them with a certain type of cement called glass ionomer cement type 2. Why? Because this type of cement has specific advantages to control caries in these areas, uh, which is the uh, fluoride release. The fluoride release can strengthen the enamel by forming a hydroxy uh, by forming fluorohydroxyapatite, which is resistant to the solubility by the acids in the oral cavity. Uh, we have other uses uh, for uh, dental cement. Uh, we, have, uh, we can use them as a temporary filling material between visits to relieve the pain of the patient because the patient comes complaining from pain. We excavate the caries and do some mechanical uh, tooth preparation and it's better to relieve the patient pain and relieve the pulp pain by using a temporary filling material because if we do a filling a permanent filling material at the same visit it will add to the irritation of the pulp and we have to bear in mind that when we do a cavity preparation or when we deal with the tooth we have to protect the pulp as much as we can also dental cements used for cementation of orthodontic brackets during orthodontic treatment uh, another use is a periodontal surgical dressing uh, sometimes the patient comes complaining with irritating gingiva or diseased gingiva uh, highly inflamed so we have to remove them surgically if we remove them surgically there is a wound the wound must be covered uh, to prevent uh, patient contamination from bacteria and also uh, to prevent pain to the patient by food and drink and so on so we have to cover them by a periodontal dressing uh, this is a type of a special type of cement also it's used as a pulp capping material the pulp capping material is a material used over exposed pulp or near exposed pulp uh, sometimes when we do a cavity preparation the care is extended towards the pulp so we have to remove the uh, caries uh, sometimes the caries will be very near to the pulp so we have to cover this uh, pulp with the um, dental cement to prevent uh, contamination and to promote healing of the pulp also in root canal sealer a root canal sealer means um, it's type of cement used when we do a root canal treatment when the pulp gets infected and we have to remove it we have to remove the infected pulp clean it and fill it with a material this material called gutta perca and must be sealed or cemented in place using a type of cement called root canal sealer and we will be discussing this later on uh, so what are the um, requirement of dental cements we have general requirement and specific requirement for each use of cement uh, the general requirement this must be non-toxic, non-irritant uh, to the pulp or to the oral tissue. It must be insoluble in the oral fluid, have antibacterial effects, and have obtundant effect or relieving pain effect. Must be easily manipulated, uh, have adequate working and setting time, and not to be technique sensitive. Also, it must adhere. Adhere means chemical bond to the tooth structure and the restoration and must be not expensive. The 
what are the specific requirements for the looting cement? Looting cement must be initially of low viscosity, must have low initial viscosity. Why, we, uh, why the cement must have low initial viscosity? This make a good flow between the cement layer and the dental uh, rest the, and the tooth structure and uh, make a good wetting of the tooth structure by the cement. And this will result in low film thickness. The film thickness means the layer, the thin layer of the cement between the restoration and the tooth. The low film thickness comes from the low initial viscosity of the cement. If the cement is not initially uh, thin and give a thick film thickness, what will happen? This will lead to improper seating of the restoration, making a thick layer at the margins of the cement and the, uh, the uh, thick margin, make a thick cement thickness at the margin of the rest, between the restoration and the tooth structure, and this will be uh, easily soluble inside the oral fluid. When the cement is soluble, this allow the, the seepage or leakage means the entrance of saliva and bacteria at the margin of the restoration leading to care, recurrent caries. And this slide will show the uh, previous uh, discussion. If the solubility of the cement occurs at the margin, the cement will uh, soluble, creating the gap between the margin of the crown and the margin of the restoration, allowing the fluids and bacteria to uh, enter this gap and will cause recurrent caries here and the solubility, more solubility to the layer of the cement leading to failure of the restoration. Also, the looting cement must have a high compressive strength and high modulus of elasticity to prevent fracture under the uh, cemented restoration. Uh, the, the looting cement must have optical properties similar to those of the tooth structure. Uh, why? Because when we cement the aesthetic restoration, such as ceramic restoration, we choose the color of the ceramic restoration uh, similar to the tooth structure. So when we cement them with a cement, it must have the same color match as the restoration and the tooth to prevent change in the uh, color of the final restoration. Also, it must have a low Cavity bases and liners must be insulated to the thermal, mechanical, and electrical stimuli to the pulp. They must have a high modulus of elasticity or high stiffness and high fracture toughness to prevent fracture under the forces of mastication. The cement base must have adequate working time for complete mixing and placement inside the tooth structure in a reasonable time. Also, it must have a suitable viscosity to uh, spread the, fillet, the cement base over the tooth structure, followed by rapid setting and adequate compressive strength. This means that the cement uh, sets in a few minutes and after setting, it must have about 50 to 70 percent of its final compressive strength to allow the condensation of the amalgam or the filling material without fracture under uh, the condensation force. 
and this slide shows that the cement is not uh, completely set uh, and we if condense the amalgam the cement will be impinged in the amalgam leading to weak restoration and it's easily failed inside the two structure under the forces of mastication also the cement base must have structural integrity means a have a very a uniform layer uh, over the tooth cavity also the cement must be restricted or um, away from the margins of the restoration uh, either occlusally or cervically to prevent solubility uh, inside the oral uh, fluid leading to secondary caries and failure of restoration uh, we classified the dental cements according to the water content of the liquid because the liquid is acidic solution with a percentage of water so when the cement water as the cement liquid contains water it is called water-based cement an example is zinc phosphate cement polycarboxylate cement and glass ionomer cement uh, we have oil based cement where where the liquid of the cement is an oil like zinc oxide ethanol cement the third one does not contain water at all it is called resin based cement like the composite resin cement which is used mainly for cementation of aesthetic restoration uh, so uh, classification according to the setting reaction we have acid base reaction and we call them the conventional cement a few, a polymerization reaction and the dual cure uh, reaction dual cure means two types of uh, setting reaction occur at the same time at the same type of the cement So the conventional cement or acid-based cement or water-based cement, they are all the same names for the uh, types of the cement, zinc phosphate, polycarboxylate, glass ionomer. We have also resin modified glass ionomer and resin uh, cement. The general reaction of the water-based cement or acid-based cement is a neutralization reaction. That means that the base, the basic powder plus acidic liquid in the presence of water will give the salt, which is the matrix of the cement, plus water. This is a general. Uh, this is the general reaction of all acid-based. What, what type of cement should we use? It depends on the properties of the cement and the clinical situation of uh, the patient. And we will see later on.